Good evening again, Cedarbrook families, and welcome to our virtual back to school night. We hope this is our first and only virtual back to school night. I'm Jim Taylor. I'm the interim principal here at Cedarbrook, and I'm again delighted to welcome you. I'm sitting here in a very, very quiet building, um, longing for your presence and the presence of your students. But know that we're uh, supporting you as you support us in this virtual world, and we'll all get through this together. So our presentation tonight will give us an opportunity to have a few minutes together to, uh, for, for me to share with you some important information about policies and procedures here at Cedarbrook, as well as have an opportunity to in introduce myself to you, as well as our amazing leadership team here at Cedarbrook. I love this quotation from Frederick Buechner in his book, Wishful Thinking. He says that vocation, that to which we're called, our work, our livelihood, is the place where our deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. In my nearly two decades of, public, of serving in public education, there is a deep gladness that I get every time I walk through the school doors. And I believe it's the critical work to which we are called as a society to educate the youngest among us in meaningful ways to prepare them to be proud citizens of our country. And part of that is working together as a team. When we work together as a team, there is nothing we can't do. So I'd like to take a minute to introduce both Mr. Byron Ryan, our vice principal, and Ms. Adesia Cohen-Johnson, our eighth grade pr vice principal. And they're gonna have a few minutes to introduce themselves to you. So Mr. Ryan, if you'll introduce yourself, we're so glad you're here this evening as well. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Byron Ryan. I am the seventh grade vice principal. I'm also a community resident and proud to have two children in the Cheltenham School District. I've been a wildcat now for approximately two years, and it's been a pleasure to serve the students and families of Cedar Brook Middle School. As a seventh grade administrator, I'll collaborate with the seventh grade teachers in their efforts to teach your children. Some examples of this collaboration include participating in team meetings, conducting walkthroughs, even though they're all virtual this year so far, and generally supporting wherever needed. Additionally, from your lens as a parent, just know that I'm here to support you in whatever way I can. Please feel free to contact me at bryan02 at cheltenham.org. That's B-R-Y-A-N-02 at cheltenham.org. If I receive any communication from you, I will do my best to answer your questions and address your concerns. Thank you for partnering with us as we endeavor to provide, provide your, the best learning experience for your child. And we hope that you have a wonderful evening viewing all of the great work that our teachers have put together for you this evening. Thanks so much, Mr. Ryan. And be sure, and I'll point this out again, when you email Mr. Ryan, it's bryan02. If you leave out the 02, you'll get one of our fine first grade teachers over at Wincote Elementary School. So Ms. Cohen Johnson, thank you for joining us and thanks for all you do as part of our team as well. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Adesia Cohen Johnson. I'm not sure why. Can you see me? I can. Oh, yes, okay. you can. <laughs> all right. It, this is a little odd. Um, I'm the eighth grade vice principal. Um, I've been at in, well, teaching in Cheltenham now for 21 years. Um, the past seven years, I've been vice principal here at Cedarbrook Middle School. And prior to that, I was at Elkins Park School as a fifth grade teacher. Um, and then before that, three years teaching in Philadelphia. Um, I'm sure when I say this, it's the sentiments of the entire staff at Cedarbrook that we miss your children. Um, it's like a parent, you know how your kids get on your nerves, but then you love them and you miss them when they're not around. That's how it is. Um, you know, the, the children that the scholars that attend Cedarbrook, they're like my kids. So I miss seeing them in the morning. I miss their high fives, their smiles, their grumpiness, all of it. 
Um, and when I, when I switched from Elkins Park to Cedarbrook, I kind of thought, oh, this is going to be a difficult transition. But what I have found is this is my favorite age group. Um, I love everything about them, their brutal honesty, their sarcasm, <laughs> their moodiness. Um, but what I appreciate the most of this age is their resilience. I have seen students at Cedarbrook just be so resilient, everything from um, overcoming challenges in the classroom to um, working hard on the playing field to helping out on the theater with, you know, backstage and props and all of that. And that just really encourages me. Um, I love what I do. I love working with kids. I think I was born to do this work um, outside of school. I work with kids uh, from working with children in my church to my nonprofit organization. So it's just what I was born to do. Um, again, just like Mr. Ryan said, I'm here to support the teachers in any way but I'm mostly here to support your children, our scholars, um, to make sure that they have the best experience that they possibly can have. And especially during this time where we're in a virtual learning environment where things are really difficult and challenging and everything is brand new. Um, I try my best to get into classes as much as possible virtually, just so I can see how things are going, check in on the students and you know, type in the chat when they're participating, giving them encouraging words like, that was a great comment, good to see your face. Um, just to let them know that we're here, even though it's in a totally different setting. So again, thank you so much for coming this evening and making yourselves available. Know that I am available for anything that you need. I can be reached via email at acohenjohnson at cheltenham.org. That's A-C-O-H-E-N, Johnson, no hyphen, um, at cheltenham.org. And I will be sure to get right back to you. Um, Again, we know this is challenging for everyone, parents who are working from home and trying to help their children stay on task. Uh, but again, we're here to help you in any way possible. Great, thanks Ms. Cohen Johnson and Mr. Ryan. So part of the transition from the elementary division to our secondary division has been the privilege to join this team. And you can see in part why I'm happy to be here. Both Ms. Cohen Johnson and Mr. Ryan have been so incredibly supportive. They've answered text after text. They've answered email after email as I attempt to learn this new, new way of being in school. And I am so grateful for the passion that they bring to this work. Um, and I look forward to our continued uh, friendship and working relationship. It's a joy to have them in the building two days a week. Um, so we know that we're not alone. So thank you all. So I want you to know that I am a little bit more than an email address and um, there really is a face to the name you get every week in your email box. So I often wonder with Beekner's quote about how did I get here? How did I end up at Cedar Brook? And it started back in 1984. I was born and raised in Alexandria, Virginia and graduated from T.C. Williams Senior High School. You might remember T.C. Williams a little bit better from the Hollywood blockbuster film, Remember the Titans. So that was my high school. And a little fun fact is that Coach Boone and Coach Yost um, were still coaching there when I was a student there. After I graduated, I went to a small uh, liberal arts college in the Appalachian region of Virginia in the coal country right in the Virginia Tennessee line where I majored in elementary education and did my student teaching in a very very rural um, poverty stricken area of Virginia where I learned firsthand that part of our call as educators is to work tirelessly for social justice and that call has followed me um, throughout my career. After I left Emory and Henry, I went back to Fairfax County, Virginia, where I taught in Fairfax County Public Schools. Before I um, pursued in 1994, a um, ordination into the priesthood in the Episcopal Church at Virginia Theological Seminary. I graduated from there in 1994, and that is actually what brought me to Philadelphia, where I uh, served as the assistant at Historic Christ Church down at Second and Market, which was part of, is part 
of Independence National Park. After serving at Christ Church, I took a parish in the Mount Airy neighborhood here in Philadelphia, which is where I began to feel a call and a, des a desire and a yearning to go back to public education. So what do I do? I went back to school. I went back to LaSalle University. I took a master's degree in education there, and that wasn't enough, and followed my love of reading and literature and became a reading specialist and got my K-12 reading certification from LaSalle and then ended up at Arcadia University where I just finished my Master's of Education in Educational Leadership and also got my K-12 principal certification. I joined the Cheltenham School District about 15 years ago, first riding the Peace Train over at Myers Elementary School where I taught first grade and then became a Wincote Lion where I taught kindergarten for many years before assuming the, and the leadership role of being the interim principal there last spring when, um, while Dr. Clark was on sabbatical, and then jumped at the chance um, and the kind invitation of our superintendent, Dr. Marseille, to join the Cedarbrook team here as the interim principal this year. I'm hoping that my time as interim principal is not always marked by COVID, and that someday I'll get a chance and an opportunity to have uh, to work in a building with actual students and teachers in a non-virtual setting. But we're making the most of it right now. Part of what I want to share with you tonight is my firm belief about education. And after spending all those years in both undergraduate and graduate institutions, I have had plenty of time to think about it. So the classroom to me is a community of learners where students, parents, and teachers come together to celebrate success. And let me be intentional about that comment. Students, parents, and teachers. We are all in this together. It's not about what your scholars do apart from the teachers, apart from the parents. It's what we all do together. And I think we work together best when we communicate with one another in honest and straightforward ways it's fine to disagree with each, with each other, which we probably will do from time to time, but we can be disagreeable in a kind way. Teachers and parents guide our students to make good choices. If you think back to your middle school experience, and I think back on mine and sort of take a deep breath and shudder every now and then, because not all the, good, not all the choices I made in middle school were good choices. So we're guiding our students to make good choices. And I'm grateful for my parents and uh, teachers and mentors along the way who guided me into making different choices. But those choices always stem from having high expectations. We have high expectations for your students. You have high expectations of us. And we have high expectations of our parents who are part of our team. We hold each other accountable to those high standards. Students and teachers are responsible for their words and actions. Practice and application are essential to improving in any subject area. When I was growing up, I took a lot of piano lessons and I absolutely dreaded the moment when my dad would ask, have you practiced today? Because the answer was usually no. But practice, while doesn't make perfect, Practice improves our fluency in various subject areas. We really focus on our individual students here at Cedar Brook. We drill down so that we get to know your students for who they are as people. And we want to focus on their individual growth, on their individual development, on helping them build grit and resiliency and overcome any challenges that might be in their, in their way. And, prevent them from putting forth their best effort. And you know this as learners yourself. Learning is best when we're engaged in the act of learning and when the learning is meaningful and the content is meaningful. We want to know what inspires your children, what their interests are, what their passions are, so that we can begin to build our lessons and activities around things that interest them. Above all, I really believe that the classroom has to be a loving, safe, and nurturing environment. 
that fosters risk-taking and conversation. We learn by taking risks. We learn by making mistakes. We learn by, by talking with each other and learning from everybody's experience. And above all, we spend so much time in school, whether it's virtually or in a brick and mortar building. At the end of the day, we want our students to say, learning has been a joyful experience for them. In order to ensure that learning is a joyful experience for them, we have carefully crafted some lovingly drawn boundaries about our behavior and our expectations for our students. Cedarbrook Middle School operates on the principles of positive behaviors, interventions, and supports. And we call that the Wildcat way. Our eighth graders have this down pat. They know this. And our seventh graders are learning it slowly. Our mantra here at Cedarbrook is that we roar. We are respectful, we are responsible, and we are resilient. We strive to outreach to others and to achieve our goals. That is the Wildcat way. And we flesh that out by being very clear with your students about what our expectations are for them while they're engaged in synchronous learning and while they're engaged in asynchronous learning. So what are the expectations when you're live with your teacher? And what are the expectations for your behavior when you're engaged in learning on your own? And as you can see from this slide, we have it mapped out carefully to align with our ROAR statement. This presentation, I should also note, is being shared with you in the slide deck that I sent to you earlier this afternoon. So all this you can look at again um, at your leisure. Recently, I was uh, doing a walkthrough of one of our te teacher's classrooms, and he was sharing this slide with his students after outlining the ROAR expectations. These are Google Meet expectations. What is it we expect your students to do when they come to the live session? And while this isn't um, captured in our war language, it is captured in easy to understand terms. So we expect students to be on time. We get that there are techno technology glitches. We all experience them, and we're all hopeful that we don't experience any tonight. We expect students to log on. We expect students to, be, to participate in class. We expect them to be prepared. But above all, we expect students to be respectful and to be kind. Kindness will undergird and be the foundation of all that we do here at Cedarbrook. Of course, we also expect your students to come to school, even in the virtual setting. So the Pennsylvania Department of Education has put some, out some guidelines for us to help us determine what constitutes a student being in attendance or being absent for the day. And again, this is in the slide deck. If you know that your child is going to be absent for the day, we encourage you to reach out uh, through email to cbkattendance at cheltenham.org. And that goes right to our attendance uh, secretary and she will mark your, your student absent. If there's evidence that your child has logged on or been in conversation with, your, with their teacher or uh, attended office hours, and your child has submitted their work on time for that day, your child will, will be marked present. If there's no evidence that your child has logged on um, or engaged with their teacher for whatever reason, but there's also evidence that your child has submitted work by 11.59 that evening, they will be marked present. And then you can see the criteria for um, when your child will be marked absent. We're all getting used to this new way of doing attendance. 
if you find there are discrepancies with your understanding of attendance and or you're getting word that your child was absent, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll look into it um, because we certainly want to give your child credit for being at school. And again, communication. You've clearly figured out by now that I want to hear from you because you're certainly going to hear from me, you're going to hear from your child's teachers, you're going to hear from our leadership team regularly. The most effective way for you to communicate with us is through email. And in Cheltenham, our emails are all the same, our first initial followed by our last name at cheltenham.org. Always feel free to reach out to me or to my secretary, Suzanne Wisman, and she will relay your message to me. If you have concerns related specifically to our seventh grade students, feel free to reach out to Mr. Ryan or Ms. Schuler, the seventh grade counselor. And again, our eighth grade vice principal, Ms. Adesia Cohen Johnson, and our eighth grade counselor, Mr. Blackman, will be happy to hear from you. We do ask that you allow 24 hours for a response. We are um, inundated some days with emails. I remember saying to Dr. Marseille shortly after I came to Cedarbrook and I had over 100 emails in one day, I said to him, I don't even know 100 people. He said, you do now. <laughs> so please be patient, we will get back to you. Um, and again, there's the Cedarbrook attendance uh, email and that will go right uh, directly to our attendance clerk. So we are in this virtual back to school night setting. And what does the rest of your evening look like? It can look like however you want to shape your evening. I did send you a link earlier this afternoon to our Google slide presentation, our Bitmoji classroom that Mrs. Cooper and Ms. Cohen Johnson and Mr. Ryan work very hard on. It is an interactive presentation. So we ask that you click on the links or listen carefully to the audio that might pop up. Um, you'll have some fun going through it. This entire presentation is there. You don't have to sit through this again. Um, it's there for your reference. But you'll hear a lot more detail about our counseling services. You'll hear more about our grading policy. Uh, uh, Ms. Cohen Johnson will flesh out some more of our attendance policy. And of course, you'll hear from Ms. Cooper about all the services that are available uh, virtually through our library and our learning commons. Again, you're welcome to look at those slides at your leisure. So what we're trying to do is model for you what asynchronous learning might look like as your child experiences that um, on Wednesdays. The links that you can click on will take you directly to your child's teacher. I encourage you to keep it for future reference. You might want to check back and um, your teacher might, that your child's teacher might spark something in your mind that you want your memory refreshed on. And you can go back and log back on and, and uh, listen again to what the teacher is, is presenting. If you don't have that link or if you've misplaced it, no problem, feel free to reach out and we'll be glad to send it to you again. I will also be sending it to you tomorrow in our uh, weekly Friday communication. I'm telling you by June, you'll be so glad that the year's over and you're not seeing Jay Taylor pop up in your inbox. But I do think that the more you hear from us, uh, the better the communication, the stronger we will be together. So I do want to say that two of the most beautiful words in the English language are thank you. I can't thank our Cedarbrook staff enough for all that they're doing to launch this virtual year. I can't thank your students for all that they are giving to this endeavor. I know it's not easy as Ms. Cohen Johnson alluded to earlier. I want to thank our leadership team. Um, for all they're doing, and especially our parents. Ms. Cohen Johnson said it best. 
We know that you are juggling lots of balls. We know that you've been thrown into some areas that you didn't necessarily want to go into um, teaching your child algebra or geometry or exploring scientific concepts with them. I want everybody to take a deep breath. I want everybody to relax. We're going to get through this together. One of my great heroes is Fred Rogers of, yep, that Fred Rogers of the neighborhood. And in the speech he gave to a graduating class shortly before he died, he asked the question, what can I, and I'm paraphrasing here, what can I do to grow the kindness within myself and the kindness that is growing in the lives of people whose lives move very close to my own. And I love that because at the end of the day, no matter what the challenge is, no matter what the struggle is, no matter what the joy is, it's all better when it's wrapped in kindness. So as we begin this virtual back to school night, as we begin and continue this virtual school year, at least through the first semester, I want you to keep pushing the kindness button. Be kind to yourself, be kind to your students, be, please be kind to our teachers, and be kind to those whose lives move very close to yours. So that concludes what I wanted to share with you tonight. Again, um, feel free to reach out. We're here for you. Enjoy looking through the interactive slides. And we look forward to welcoming you, when it's safe for all of us, back to Cedarbrook Middle School, where we roar loud and proud. Thanks again. Have a great night. And remember, be kind to one another. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you soon.